Hey there folks, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks a lot for joining us today on Doc Talk. We're gonna have a great show. Our guest is Dr. Bob Larson, and he is the Coleman Chair and a professor at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're gonna talk about flies, cattle, getting rid of those pesty things. I'm glad that you joined us. Stick around, it's gonna be a great show. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Doc Talk, brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick. In Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Welcome to the show, Bob. It's good to be here. <laughs> Folks, Dr. Bob Larson, and Dr. Larson is the Coleman Chair, and he is a professor in clinical sciences here in the Department of Clinical Sciences at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine and Bob has spent a lot of time not only in raising cattle and practice with cattle and 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 then extension and now research with cattle so yep. got a lot of experience and and uh, got a chance to move back home and continue right. on your 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 career here at Kansas State. That's exactly right. We've got a good group here and it's fun to work come to work every day. Yep, yep, we sure do and we're, we're very lucky. And so we're going to talk about flies and uh, you know there's lots of different types of flies and different things that they cause but let's just kind of jump right in. That, that's exactly right. When you think of summertime uh, maybe you think about other more pleasant things but you also think <laughs> about flies. Yeah. Uh, it's the time of year when we deal with flies and there are, there are a number of different types of flies. And, and the reason that's important is, well, they, their populations might peak at slightly different times of the summer. Uh, they cause different types of annoyance or problems for cattle, and we control them in different ways. So even though we typically think of flies as just one category of nuisance as flies, but there's actually several different types of flies that cattle producers are concerned about and, and work to, to minimize. You bet. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of these different types of flies, and and because I, you know, to me a fly is a fly. I'm gonna get after it, but um, but there are some that that leave you with a little more discomfort than others. Too. That, that's right. There's a there's a few really important fly species that we deal with in cattle for cattle out grazing on grass. Uh, probably the biggest ones are the horn fly and face fly, and somewhat also the the horse fly. Um, and so we're gonna target our control methods really on, on those particular fly species. When you move cattle into a dry lot or a feedlot situation, then you're talking about stable flies and house flies as a bigger problem. And, and again, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but, but those flies have some differences. They have differences in the amount of time they spend on the cattle versus off the cattle, and differences in where they tend to lay their eggs and, and different parts of the life cycle that's gonna impact how we try to control them. Well, all of those are going to be important when you start to think about management products and things that you're going to implement because if they don't spend much time on the cattle and, and, and that, you probably don't want to spend a lot of time controlling them there. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So understanding their life cycle and understanding where they like to be is, is important? Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, and it also impacts other aspects of how they damage or how they cause problems for cattle. You know, some of the problems we see with flies are, are just the, the annoyance. Some of them are, are blood suckers, so they're, gonna, they're going to have a painful bite. They're going to suck blood. They're going to decrease growth performance. They're going to change the behavior of cattle. They'll drive the cattle to the shade or bunching up or getting in water to get away from the flies. All of those are problems both with animal welfare, animal health, and productivity. Um, another thing that we think about with flies, too, that that uh, comes up is how this affects our neighbors. Uh, our neighbors, Absolutely. other cattlemen, our neighbors that don't raise cattle. Uh, we, one of the reasons we try to control flies is not only for the health and comfort of the cattle, but I don't really want to get phone calls from neighbors that are angry because there's a lot of flies on their property <laughs> that came from my property. Absolutely. And so those are all reasons that we try to attack these dang things all summer long uh, we worry about flies, and 
they, they take some effort to control. Cool. We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to get into talking about some flies on grazing cattle and how to control and prevent that. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Doc Talk, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and guest, Dr. Bob Larson. And Dr. Larson is a world-renowned bovine practitioner and clinician uh, professor here at Kansas State University and, and we're tickled to death to have you on the show and, and have you sharing some of this with us. I, when we're talking about flies, one of the, the you know, we're going to get into the grazing cattle, but when I was in practice, we had this terrible outbreak of flies next to one of my client's feeding facilities. Yeah. Well, the, the field next to us was a cucumber patch that they were raising cucumbers for classic pickles or somebody's pickles. Right. And the cucumbers got too big, and so they wouldn't fit in the jar or something to that nature. So they put them all in a, per, in a pit for a slurry. And that, here came the flies. We <laughs> got flies like you couldn't believe. But it's like what we were talking about when you left about the neighbor and, yeah. you know, some of those things. And sorry, maybe it wasn't Vlasic. I don't know the brand name of the pickle. Don't, don't, don't write the pickle company. But anyway, <laughs> you know, well, it's things we don't think about. That's exactly right. Flies are, you know, they're, they're very adaptable and they, they will find ways to be annoying. Dirty boogers. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about flies on grazing cattle. Yeah, and and uh, some of the things that we have there. Yeah, the the two biggest flies that we really are worried about with grazing cattle are horn flies and face flies, and they're they're actually fairly different in that the the horn fly is a biting fly. It's a blood it's blood meals, and it mostly lives on the the back and shoulders of, of cattle, and sometimes up on their pole. They're called horn flies, but they don't spend that much time up on, not on around, the horns. Not really on the horns, <laughs> but the, the back and the sides. They like I say, they they have a piercing mouth part so they're going to take blood meals and that's annoying to the cattle they'll um, we see decreased in you know weight gain performance decrease in milk production uh, the the stable fly has also been associated with passing mastitis in, <laughs> in beef cattle and so it, it has a number of problems it spends almost all of its time on cattle so most of our control methods are focused on the fact that we can treat the cattle and have an impact on the fly. Yeah, these are the ones that when you you see the the cow, you know, shake or, or yeah, and shiver the, and the cloud yep, comes exactly. off the, the, the cow. And and you know it's it's boy, it, I tell you what, and they just constant tail swishing and, and things to that yeah. nature. Yeah, they're a problem. Now the face fly is the other fly that we really worry about a lot with grazing cattle. Um, it is, it's different, it's a, it's a bigger fly if you want to look at them closely or side by side than a horn fly. And they spend most of their time around the face of the cattle. They don't have a piercing mouth part. They, they suck on the, on the fluids that come out of the eyes and nose and things like that. One of the biggest problems with face flies is they'll cause enough damage around that eye or in that eye and they move from animal to animal so that they can spread the organisms that cause pink eye in cattle. And that, really its biggest effect is is the fact that it's spreading the disease pink eye. The flies by themselves are not that annoying to the cattle. They don't really spend that much time on the cattle. They spend most of their time off of the cattle in vegetation, decaying vegetation, things like that, and away from the cattle and only come back and occasionally feed. And that again that impacts the way we're able to attack these animals or these flies and and again, the, the, the real problem is the fact that it's associated with spreading pink eye. Great. We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to get into the differences between some of the grazing cattle and the dry lot cattle and some of the things you think about with flies. 
Thanks, Bob, for being here yeah. today. And thank you for watching more about flies with Dr. Bob Larson after the break. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Dan Gale and his wife, Rachel, own and operate the Canton Veterinary Clinic in Canton, Missouri, where he works with large animal clients, primarily stalker and cow-calf beef operations. Dr. Gale is a partner in Professional Beef Services, an organization that provides information to the beef industry and also writes a blog on AgWeb. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Well-designed container flower gardens bring beauty to your home, at your entry, on your patio, or placed in a special spot in your landscape. Let Jackson's help you select the correct plant combinations which will add the color and style you need and that will survive the summer to provide beauty till frost. Save 50% now at Jackson's annual bedding plant clearance sale. Veggies and pottery 25% off too. Come on out and save now. Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center, and I'm with you for a horse tip. You gotta remember that a horse's feet are very important, and there's a aspect of everyday uh, routine, uh, just moving around and use uh, on the farm or in performance. When you look at the horse's hoof and the hoof capsule, Cleaning out the hoof is very important because they can get a lot of debris. They can get rocks inside uh, the grooves of their foot. They can even get a nail. So cleaning out the horse's feet are going to be very important and assessing on a day-to-day -day basis. And while you're on rides, taking and having a hoof pick is also going to be important to keeping everything clean and safe. So again, keep your farrier and your veterinarian involved for keeping your hoof healthy and free of debris. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Larson. Dr. Larson is the Coleman Chair and professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences here at the Veterinary School at Kansas State University. And talking about flies, mm -hmm. talked about the face flies and the horn flies out on the grazing cattle. Now we're gonna move in dry lots. So we right. bring cattle in dry lots, feed lot situations, stalker operations. What is the difference that we're gonna see as far as species? Well, when we move to a dry lot situation, feed lots, uh, we tend to see primarily stable flies and house flies. One of the reasons that's a little bit different or important to think about compared to grazing cattle, horn flies, there yep. you go. Horn flies and face flies both like to lay their eggs in basically fresh manure pats, okay? okay? The flies that we see in a dry lot situation, they actually prefer to lay their eggs in decaying vegetation, and particularly if it's mixed with a little bit of manure. So feed, manure, wet, moist feed areas are the places where the the flies that we see in dry lot situations laying their eggs. Therefore, when we think about control, we really do focus a lot on not just manure, but other other places where the animals will or the flies will lay their eggs, primarily spilled feed, spoiled feed. So things like sanitation becomes really important, just keeping things as cleaned up, picked up, 
uh, as possible to try to keep the the places where those flies can lay eggs down to a minimum. Yeah, and and you start to think about you know we got to feed hay to to calves when we're starting them, but when you get it out in the alleyway and you don't get that clean your feed alleys yeah. cleaned up or old bale rings, you old know. bale rings, silage pits, feed piles. Um, the, you know, the edges right under the, the bunks where feed kind of accumulates, those are all great areas for the flies to accumulate. And so they're areas that we really target to keep cleaned up and, and minimized to avoid fly problems. You bet. So, so in the dry lot situation, you know, I, I think that we always think of more of the, the issues with, with flies being more outside of dry lots, but, mm -hmm. but it can be a pretty big deal inside and so the house flies also are known for for transmitting some diseases potentially correct yeah there's there's you know just if you think about where flies move you know from animal to animal from manure to animals and those kinds of things there, there's a number of different diseases that they can move around in a in a cattle operation that we're just trying to suppress as much as possible and the other thing is as we went back to the neighbor deal you don't want to be out there eating your piece of watermelon this summer no i don't and have the flies keep <laughs> coming and the other thing is is that that we have seen that the flies will um transmit the the e. coli 157 yeah. yeah there's so. there's a number of things so we really do want to try to keep those populations down as low as possible in that feedlot environment uh you know, the, the actual middle of the pen where it's packed down pretty good, that's not where the flies are going to lay eggs and, and, and live. Huh. It's going to be along the edges, along the fence rows. It's going to be around the water tanks, particularly if it gets kind of wet, wet and, and uh, moist there, and just off the yard. You know, as you, as you divert uh, rainwater and, and off flow into lagoon pens and things like that, those are areas where the, the flies can develop as well. Yeah. So when you think about a dry lot, you, you think a lot about sanitation, just trying to get rid of any of those places where the flies like to lay eggs. Keep the weeds mowed down, folks. That's, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to close up our show on flies. We've been uh, having a great time here with Dr. Bob Larson from Kansas State University, and we're going to have a little more after the break. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now. Putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. Tar Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tar Waters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tar Water Farm and Home. Family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hi there and welcome to today's BQA Tip of the Day and we're gonna talk about heat stress. First thing you need to do is we need to look at the thermal heat index and as the thermal heat index starts to approach that point of concern of causing heat stress to cattle, we need to discontinue what we're doing. So we don't want to work cattle during the heat of the day or process cattle or ship cattle during the heat of the day and really pay attention to our humidity, temperature and wind speed. The next thing you want to make sure is that we provide airflow for cattle during general times in which they're trying to eat or live within the pens. Knock down weeds, build mounds, put up shades, many different things that we can do to provide airflow, to provide shade and relief from heat. That's today's BQA tip of the day. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. 
Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Association of Wheat Growers and the Kansas Wheat Commission. Together, we are Kansas Wheat. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Larson, and we're looking at some new contraption here, the vet yeah. gun to flies. I'd, um, <laughs> I'd have to get to be a better shot to pick off those flies one by one with that, I think. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Guns don't kill flies. I kill flies, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, all kidding aside, we're going to talk about, you know, how to control these flies and prevent the flies yeah. um, in in the system. And and let's start out with the dry lot. Yeah, let's do. Now remember, because the the flies that we're most concerned about in a dry lot situation, they tend to lay their eggs where there's vegetative matter or vegetative matter mixed with manure. And so it's all about sanitation, cleaning up the feed areas, not letting it get wet around. Uh, watering, uh, waterers, troughs, those kinds of things. So it's, it's really a lot about sanitation, keeping things cleaned up as much as possible. Because the fly doesn't spend much time on the cattle, uh, we don't typically talk about spraying cattle in a dry lot situation. We might spray the premises, these same stable flies. They'll, they'll, when they're not on the cattle, they'll be on fence rails, they'll be on surfaces around the area. Weeds. Yeah, they're just not on the cattle. Right. So spraying the weeds, spraying the facilities, and those kinds of things, we can do that as a premise spray, as well as um, there's use of parasitic wasps and other things that, that attack the, the little larva in the that feed stage. Through, yeah. Feed through products so, that wind so up there, in the manure. Yeah, Th there's, there's several ways we attack them, but in a dry lot situation, it's gonna start with sanitation. Sanitation and trying to kill the, the pupa or the eggs, so That's exactly. Right. What about grazing cattle? Well, in grazing, it's a little bit different. Uh, in that situation, the, the flies, both the house, the horn fly and the face fly, likes to lay their eggs in the fresh fecal pads. Well, out on a big pasture, we're not going to really impact that very much. We're not going to go pick them up. Yeah. Well, it's hard to spray 80 acres. It, it is. You know? <laughs> and, and so it's really about uh, using our chemical controls for these flies in a in a way that's timely and most effective uh, to get it to the cattle. We've got several ways we can deliver the, the fly control chemicals to cattle. We can use ear tags, yep. we can use back rubbers, dust bags, oilers, sprays. All of those are ways to deliver one of several different types of, of chemicals on, onto the cattle to control flies. Guns. Yeah. We got guns. <laughs> That's right. Solution with the trigger. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, we're trying to deliver the chemicals. Now, the one thing about the manure, I said that we couldn't do much about them. There are some feed-through insecticides that basically, you, in a mineral mix or otherwise, the cattle consume uh, a product, an insect growth regulator, that then when it passed in the manure and the fly lays an egg there, it disrupts the ability of that that egg and pupa larva to develop properly. And those work in, in some situations. The biggest problem with them is the cattle need to consume that consistently and flies are moving between herds. If neighbors aren't using that same product, then, then you don't get the same level of control. So typically we don't talk about controlling the manure in a grazing situation, but there are, there are some tools for that. Well. You've been a great guest today, and oh, as always, some great information for our producers and veterinarians. Good. Well, hopefully everybody can uh, enjoy the summer without a lot of fly problems. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, if you want to know more about what Dr. Larson and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us this morning on Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.